Hey, what is up nerds? Long time no see and today I want to talk about my new coffee warmer on my desk here. So yes, I got the Mac Mini. This is the i7 version 6 cores, 3.2 uh, gigahertz and I got the 8 gig version and I put in the RAM myself, which worked quite all right. Uh, only one time I almost ripped out a little cable, but it was quite easy though. So. Um, there's a nice video, I have a link below, from Apple Insider, thanks to them. I, it was quite easy to replace the RAM, so I put in 32 gigs of RAM. So the reason why I did go for this little Mac Mini, and if it's still a good solution, um, yeah, we will talk about that later on in the video. But first, numbers and benchmarks, so let's dive in, start Final Cut 10 and see what's what. Okay, so we have the 2016 MacBook Pro with a full core machine and the 2018 Mac Mini with six core. Both are i7, but uh, new generation, of course. I also did a CPU benchmark at first. So here you can see um, the single core is not that faster, but the multi core, of course, is quite a bit better with the six cores and the higher clock speed and the more modern CPU infrastructure. Metal GPU benchmarks are no, not too impressive in the end. It's slightly better, but in the end it's the same Thunderbolt 3 port speed and the same graphics card. But I think the pipeline might be a bit more efficient on the Mac Mini. OpenCL as well. Uh, it's a bit better and I think the infrastructure is just a bit more efficient with the better CPU, more RAM, uh, the communication with the eGPU is just better, just a bit better, I think. So that helps, I think. Unit in Heaven, uh, here you can see basically the same thing. It's not really better, just a tiny little bit better in terms of frame rates. And Udigen Valley, I think, <laughs> not much different here. I think margin of error here. The MacBook Pro actually is a tiny bit better, but uh, I think the overall performance is just the same. So now here are the real numbers. Same project as always. So the ProRes export times are 30 seconds faster, which comes down to just better communication with the eGPU, I think, and the CPU that does its part and also the RAM. I think it's the whole package that makes this machine just faster. Especially when it comes to H.264, you can see here the machine utilizes more of the CPU and the RAM itself. So it's a minute, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less faster when exporting H.264 right inside of Final Cut 10. So here are some numbers. I will make a detailed video about that, comparing different workflow situations. But you can see Apple Compressor did quite good. For the YouTube preset, it was the fastest. And Handbrake, I mean, yes, it is a bit slower, but I think it's still the more efficient codec exporting solution in terms of quality and file size. That is also a big thing. Both Media Encoder and Compressor did export bigger files and the quality is the same or even a little bit worse, I think. Handbrake still does a better job. So yeah, those are the numbers. The most important things are out of the way. So let's talk a bit more in detail why, what and anyway. Yeah, so there you have it. So it is quite a nice little machine there and performance is noticeably better. Now it's not uh, a dramatic push for performance, but it's still quite nice. And in relation or comparison to my old 2016 MacBook Pro, it's quite more stable, smoother and faster. So you all saw the synthetic benchmarks and yes, of course, CPU benchmarks are much better and the GPU is good as well. I think I'm not quite sure still if the driver for the Radeon 7 is that stable. I mean, there was an update to 10.14.6. I did a little bit more testing and nothing really changed. So um, if there's a bug or whatever, it is um, still 
maybe not performing as good as it could. Uh, but also I put in the Vega 64 and the Vega 64 was slower. So yeah, render times are 30 seconds to a minute faster depending on what project you have, what plugins, what settings and what codec. But it is quite a bit faster and much smoother playback. I think that comes down to a few factors. So let's talk about all those. So of course you have more CPU power, you have more cores, you have higher clock speeds, you have consistent higher clock speeds. So even, uh, I mean, the base clock is uh, 3.2, uh, 3.2 gigahertz, and it stays around three gigahertz most of the time and even goes up to four gigahertz depending on how long and how much the machine has to work but it doesn't throttle like the mac uh, book pros do uh, even though all the newer ones seem not to have this this problem as well so this is good uh, more cores more hyper threading so all that plays into the playback and render power especially for raw files like i mean red raw 8k stuff like that um, so even h264 uh, encoding was significant faster i think a minute or more and you could see um, that's the factor number number two why this machine works better is the ram it has more ram 32 in my case and I saw it use 20 gigs at least for H.264 encoding. And also a slight factor is um, this machine doesn't have a dedicated internal graphics card. It pushes everything out to the eGPU. Some stuff is used by the integrated graphics thing that is on the CPU. So uh, I think the system just doesn't have to struggle with pushing things around from one GPU the, to the other. So it goes straight to the eGPU, even though it's still not the full potential. I mean, a graphics card uh, uses usually 16 lanes of PCI-E and uh, with Thunderbolt, it's only four. So I think uh, some people measured it or there was a number around. So you lose like 40% of performance, around 40% performance with the eGPU, uh, but still it's better than the, I mean, there is no integrated, separate, dedicated graphics card, so to speak. In certain times like H.264 encoding, this internal chip works uh, with the eGPU. But then again, I think the overall performance and communication with the eGPU is a bit easier for the system uh, on this machine uh, because it doesn't have to struggle with all the separate GPU units. Uh, so that might be a, a little bit of a performance boost as well. Now, why did I go for this little thing uh, and why didn't I go for like an iMac? Um, a few reasons here. First of all, it all came down to the MacBook Pro keyboard. I have the 2016 version and I didn't have any issues um, until early this year, I think, when I started to be on the road all the time and um, a few more keys. I only had one key at first, uh, but more and more keys started not working or had issues getting into online banking uh, passwords and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that was an issue, but also the spacebar is one key that doesn't really work too well. So that is an issue on uh, for editing on the road. Uh, so I had to think about, okay, I have to send it in. You can replace or repair this uh, MacBook Pro keyboard with no costs. So there's a replacement program, but you still have to th send it in. And in Germany, it's not too fast. It can take one week or a little bit more, sometimes less, depending on um, where you are. Uh, I have no Apple store in my area, uh, so I have to send it in and stuff like that. So that, that takes a while. So I was thinking about, okay, I need a machine that can replace for a certain amount of time uh, my MacBook Pro. And I thought oh, maybe maybe it's time to update my machine in my office anyways a bit. 
and so I was looking around. And uh, also keep in mind, I have an eGPU already and I switched all my um, workstation thing to this LG White. So this is my new, since quite a while now, this is my new um, screen and I don't really need another screen. So the iMac kind of didn't make sense. Also, all the new machines have really powerful, integrated, dedicated GPUs and um, the performance with the eGPU doesn't really make sense so I wanted a machine that uses or can use or benefit from the eGPU also a price thing so when I paid for it 1600 euros uh, also 130 euros for the RAM that I did put in myself so if you go for the lowest end iMac, which is an i7 with the same processor basically with the Vega 20 card and the display of course 20 inch though, so you pay around um, 2300 or 2700 euros. So this is a uh, thousand euros more and I don't keep in mind, I don't really need a display. I have keyboard, I have all the accessories, I don't have actually space for the the other screen i mean i have this bank you here i mean the imac screen could replace but then again why i this is perfect uh, i don't really need that and if you go for the higher end imax they are really powerful now uh, the 5k imax uh, but if you go for the i5 the vega 48 uh, you don't need the, the uh, egpu anymore you're looking at 3200 60 3300 euros so this is quite a bit of money um, and the ram okay i mean um, of course and for the macbook pros for the mid-range i7 model with the 32 gigs of ram you have to buy that ram because you can't put it in yourself and with the 560x so it's not even the vega cards you're looking at 3500 euros so this is um, 2000 more. So I really didn't need a new MacBook Pro because this one is still quite nice and still works. I mean, it is a little bit older, but 2016 machines are still quite powerful for on the road. Uh, I only do data management, photo editing and um, light video editing. The, all the big projects are done here and for that, it kind of felt a little bit on its limit, so to speak. Also the fan noise, the MacBook Pro kind of gets loud, especially when I'm editing photos. And there I also kind of saw all the RAM issues. 16 gigabytes are not enough if you want to work on a lot of Sony RAW files. 46 megapixel files if you open up a few in Photoshop and mm, stuff like that. Um, this machine was on its limits. I noticed quite a bit of performance improvements for Capture One. Photo exporting is much faster on the Mac Mini. Um, I think because of the RAM and the CPU, not mu so much on the eGPU. So there was also a factor. And one big thing also, this little Mac Mini has the same amount of ports than the iMac Pro. Even if you consider the MacBook Pros with the four Thunderbolt ports, um, the base or the 5K iMac only has two Thunderbolt ports and um, I really need all those four Thunderbolt ports. I have a call digit box there. This is my main hub with all the hard drives connected. The RAID is connected there. My all my accessories are on that thing uh, that I need one dedicated lane for the eGPU. It doesn't make sense to have it daisy chained because you really want to have all the power you can have on the eGPU. Then I also have another USB-C hub with all the uh, controllers here and all the little things. Um, that is one lane. Um, also a few hard drives, external hard drives like little Seagate drives and stuff like that are all on that little USB-C hub. And on the last port I have connected my Samsung SSD T5 with the current projects I'm working on. So I need all the ports I have and also the other two USB 3 ports are really nice with USB-A 
um, connected to my iPad Pro and uh, another hard drive. So all the ports are needed and are really nice. The only Mac that also has all those ports is the iMac Pro and that one is expensive. I didn't even look up the prices here. So um, uh, yeah. So now the question is, is it still a nice solution for Final Cut 10 and photo work and all that? And the answer is yes and no. Um, if you have a screen, a good screen, like this LG widescreen, I really love this screen. And if you have an eGPU already, and if you have keyboard and mice, I have the Craft keyboard from Logitech and of course the MX Master. For that price and if you have all the stuff, it is a good machine. Uh, it works really well. Um, especially when you compare it to a little bit older MacBook Pros, like the 2016 and 2017 version. Um, it is a step up, even though you don't pay too much. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I will change a bit my workflow. I will make a video about my setup here. And uh, even I think at some point when this MacBook Pro is back from repair, a on the road kit overview. But for now, I think the Mac mini is my main station in the office here in my edit bay. On the road, I will take my MacBook Pro for a little bit more complex stuff. And then I will switch to the um, iPad Pro, which I just got um, and will do all my light photo editing, especially on the plane or on the road in the car or whatever. And uh, yeah, I think this is a um, much better solution for on the road, especially for photo editing, I think. Um, for the projects I do now with iPad OS, of course. Yeah, so this will change up that thing. So I really don't need the MacBook Pro, I think, that much anymore. Only video editing. I don't think video editing is that good on this thing. We will see. Anyways, that's it. If you have any questions about the Mac Mini, about eGPU, about Final Cut 10, and other stuff. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching guys um, and thanks for sticking around even though I didn't upload anything because I was really busy with work. And um, there will be a few more, more videos coming. I will talk about uh, this call digit box, um, what I have in terms of dongles. Also I will compare the Apple Pencil to another solution from Logitech and which I keep and uh, yeah more workflow stuff uh, later on also lenses I have the new 85 from Samyang and I compared to the old version so that is in the works and all other stuff will come as well like a new overview on my desk setup now uh, since uh, the Mac mini now is the key main workstation in my office. Anyways, that's it. See you in the next one. Cheers.